This is Joseph Coco. I'm at MTech 2017 on behalf of Becca Hilburn's Art Process blog. If you could introduce yourself, Becca Dinoff. Hi, I'm Becca Dinoff of the Evergreen Borough. Um, I make handmade geekery. Okay, and what's bringing you to MTech this year? Um, well, I was here last year and had a really great time, um, and I'm happy that I got to be back this year. Um, the convention attendees are super great and super sweet, and yeah, I really love this con a lot. Okay, so. so you're thinking that handmade things work really well at this convention? They do. Um, there's a there's a pretty decent balance of print versus handmade um, in this in this particular alley. Yeah. Um, and it it's it's been good for me. So. So yeah, but as with everything, your mileage may vary. Yeah, of course. So is that usual for an artist alley at an anime convention? Like how well um, do your wares usually fare versus like say prints or um, comics or anything along those lines? Um, well, I've structured my business so that I have things that are what I think of as unique or enough variety where if something is not going well, I can I have enough to sort of balance that out. Um, yeah, it's like so, a mix of geek culture and right, anime sort of thing. Right, I, I try to appeal to a large audience and I also <laughs> am a super big nerd myself, so I make things that I would want to buy. They're really good. Okay, and what got you started working <laughs> conventions? Um, well, I, I did craft shows uh, in college for a bit. Um, and I actually was dragged by my friends to attend my first convention and walked into the artist alley and I was like, wow, this is indoors, there's no like, there's no weather concerns and yeah. I don't have to drag in my own table and tent and also these people are all geeks like me, like yeah. here's where my audience is. So, um, so then I signed up the next year. Okay. So, yeah. And you're from the Atlanta area, correct? I am, yeah. Okay. Do you travel to a lot of cons or you just have a few exceptions like MTAC? Um, I, I try to keep my travel within about six hours because um, that's the most driving I want to do in one day okay. um, by and myself. You, you don't ever fly to any cons? I don't fly because my stuff is really heavy and I do 3D art. Um, sure. Yeah, with prints and things like that or traditional media, it's a little bit easier to fly, I think. Um, right. But my stuff's really big, so. Yeah. Um, so I noticed you have some metal stamping things, which is something I haven't seen very often in the artist alley. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, how you decided to go about doing metal stamping? Is it something that you specifically did for your business, or is it a hobby that developed into something for your business? Um, I had a friend who was doing it as a hobby, and we, we have like a, a monthly craft get together. And I was like, hey, can I can I try that? Show me what you know. Um, and she was doing like local craft fairs and things, and so I saw it, decided it was super fun because you bang metal with a giant hammer, like. What's not like to love about that? Like traditional or something, right? just without all the fire. Right, right, right exactly. It's, it's sort of a, a cold fusion, if you will. Right. Um, and I decided that, you know, fandom needs something that's both subtle and nerdy. So yeah, yeah so that was my niche a little bit. Yeah, and also something that's not just generic mass-produced merchandise. Right, well that's <laughs> what the artist alley is all about. Right, you know. something that your your hand went into creating and not just ran off a million copies. Right, exactly. It's, okay. Yeah, it takes a while to sort of develop the skills and develop the product, but at this point I've been doing the metal stamping for about a year and a half, um, and I've gotten a little good at it, I think. <laughs> so. Okay. And how do you? How hard is it to make a new product or a new SKU or whatever? So. You, you know, something new comes out, or you're inspired by something, or something along those lines. You say, "Okay, I, I, I want to try to make a new uh, uh, pendant." Um, what's the process for that? Um, I have a. Um, there's this thing called Trello, which is like an online to-do list. Sure. Um, and I have a Trello that's like miles long. Full yeah. Of ideas and inspiration. Just business and, aspiration, basically. Right. Basically, like here's a cool thing. How do I apply that cool thing to my business? Or how do I take that aesthetic and make it my own? Yeah. Um, or how do I see this really cool thing that someone else is doing and learn those skills yeah, and like somehow it into make your it, thing. right, yeah. right, somehow make it totally different, but with those same skills. 
Sure. So, yeah, plus I really like buying new equipment. It's kind of a problem. <laughs> um, so, so like craft supplies are a, well, a weakness. You can tell yourself <laughs> that you're growing your business. Right, so it's, right. Uh, growing the business. Thanks, Michael. <laughs> buying, <laughs> buying toys, basically. Basically, yeah, that's, I get to a, buy toys. That's and a then, very common artist trope, though, right. that uh, you you become obsessed with your supplies as much as you become obsessed with creating. 100%. All yeah. of my glue guns have names. It's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how Becca's blog got started in the first place, because she also liked toys, but she didn't know what to get. So mm. it's like, well... I'm gonna to try to put information out there so that people don't get bit like I do, like I have, for, or like she has rather, for, uh, you know, buying products that don't hold up, right. to say the least. Right. Yeah. Um. So for your plushies, they're all hand sewn, correct? Yep. They're all handmade by me. Okay. Um. What's the process for like choosing those materials and uh, just experimenting with things? Like, are they? Do you tend to just go with like a couple of designs or one design and stick with that, or do you try to swap out uh, materials or maybe stitches uh, as the product evolves? Um, I, I tend to go through different versions of things. Um, okay. Like right now we're on version, I think, three of the sun sprites, and they just sort of keep getting better and better, I think. Um, part of being an artist is finding more efficient ways to do things and finding ways that look better or are easier to do. Uh, so so I've, I've done a little bit of that as far as like how do I get inspired to create plushies, and it's they just go to the fabric store and walk around for a cool, and go, I'm, yeah, I'm going to yeah. make something out of this. I don't yeah. know what yet, but it's coming home with me. Yeah, that so, makes perfect sense. Yeah, that's how the Yetis got started, is they're super soft. Yeah. And that fabric was just like... And their faces <laughs> are just adorable. Thank so. you. Thank you. <laughs> um, they just, yeah, they're really soft. And I like ran my hands over the fabric. It was like, ah, mm, yes. <laughs> I sent a fuzzy, adorable creature in my future. Right, exactly. <laughs> the plushy okay. sense was tingling. Yeah. Um, so, are you having to like treat the fabrics, or for the most part, when you buy them, they're they're ready to be processed? Into yeah, I, I don't buy like raw fabric. Um, all of the fabric I buy comes from like a it's it's pre pre processed, I guess. Um, yeah. The, there is a sort of a faux fur fuzz cloud that happens on my floor once I cut the fabric, uh, which yeah. is super hilarious to walk into. Um, so yeah. Do you have problems? And the strings are velcro. Yep. Do you do you run into issues with uh, your pets trying to eat your stray bits of fabric? Um, my my dog Hala really likes fuzzy things. She yeah. will like come into the studio and like watch me as she like eats a piece of fuzz off the ground. And <laughs> just to see if it's okay. Just to see if it's okay, like in slow motion. And no matter how many times I'm like, nah, maybe bro, this, don't maybe do this it. time. Right, maybe this time, but no, she. Okay, uh, I was I was just curious. Sorry about that. I didn't want to interrupt your sales, Becca. Um, so I was uh, trying to get at how many conventions do you work in a year? I know you have uh, currently either full-time or near full-time job, correct? I have a full-time muggle job um, right. as an accountant. Um, and I, I do 12 to 13 conventions a year. Um, some big, some small, some in the middle. Um, but I try to balance being able to put on a good show at a convention with... Um, pushing myself really hard yeah so, so trying to do that in a sane sort of way um right. my goal is to so be that doing, you don't burn yourself out right well eventually i will do this full time cross my fingers knock on wood <laughs> um and the goal is to be doing a convention pretty much every other weekend so, yikes yeah, that is it'll, intense it'll be good though like i i love doing conventions i love meeting people i love seeing nerds excited about nerdy stuff that i also like like I've made really great friends here through either Artist Alley or just talking to people and like building that community means a lot to me. And so being able to go to different places and facilitate that makes me really happy. Yeah. So, so we haven't actually talked to too many artists who are trying to turn Artist Alley into a business. A lot of people just have it as supplementary income or they do other things like Becca does with uh, creating her comic. and. 
the artist alley is just a way to rope in more people for that. So, would you have any advice to people who are considering, um, maybe they've they've done a few artist alleys and they're considering doing it full time? Like, how how do you go about doing that? Just work more cons, or do more research, or produce more product? Um, like, where 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 do you start to move towards doing it full time? It's, it's a combination of a lot of different things. Um, one of the things that I'm trying to do personally is to diversify my sort of revenue streams. Um, so I have an online store, right. uh, theevergreenborough.com. Um, I have an Etsy store. Um, I'm doing craft fairs as well as artist alleys. Um, getting your, your product and your face and your brand in front of as many different people as possible is kind of my goal. Um, um, and I would recommend that for pretty much anyone that's sort of common sensey. Yeah. Um, I more cons is not necessarily better cons. You want to go to a con that has your audience. So like I do pretty well at comic cons. I do pretty well at anime cons. Um, I don't do super well at anything that's not geared like a, a gen kind of con. I haven't done super well at because there there's just too much going on. Yeah. So, so Becca I would, had some issues with um, a general sort of cons in the north as well. I can't think of what it's called. It was like a general geekery con. Yeah. And she sold terribly. But I've also known people who said they sold well there. So right. And this is what's so hard bag. about this business is what works for me is not going to work for Becca, is not going to work for anybody else. Like you have to do some market research. Um, you have to, one of the things that I do when researching a con is I look on the U.S. government website to see what the median income of that area is. Yeah. If it's, you know, if it's a certain number per, um, per you know, population or higher, I know that I'm probably going to do pretty well. If it's below a certain number, it is sort of hit or miss. So it depends on if I have another con that weekend, if it's one day, two day, etc. Uh, so right. knowing what cons you're going to do well at, knowing what kind of chances and risks that you can, you can affordably take, that will help. Um, sure. But one of the best pieces of advice I ever got going into this as a business is that you're you're not ready to do a con until you're ready to take a complete loss. Like if you cannot afford to get your gas to go home unless you make your table, you're not ready yet. Um, yeah. So so yeah. So just like every stability. business, you need right. some sort of stream. Need, exactly. You need to raise some capital before you try and like push yourself too far. Sure. So. Yeah. And uh, Becca also has uh, con reviews on her website, natasoup.com, uh, uh, for probably around 25 cons, like detailed reviews of what sold there, what type of people were there, how the staff treated you. So if people are interested in seeing if a con fits them, that might also be a good resource for it's that. It's a really good resource, and I know that I've used it in the past. So. Okay. Um, so I did want to also ask you, I'm kind of along the same vein, doing a lot of cons. Are you switching out merchandise that you're displaying at a con to fit the type of people that's there, or for the most part, your booth stays static? Um, I I will switch my display around to give a little highlight bit more certain to things. highlight certain things. Um, if I know I'm going to be at an anime con, I make sure that I have the anime stuff that I like um, prominently displayed at you know eye level. Um, if I'm at a comic book convention, I might give more display space to the comic stuff. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's really a your mileage may vary. Um, you also have to keep in mind what's around you. You want to catch the flow of traffic in the right way so that it moves with your booth, uh, sort of right. visually. Um, I, because I do what I, I think is kind of a lot of cons, um, I don't necessarily have time to be like, ah, there's this specific guest at this con, yeah, I'm going to make, make something that. with that IP um, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I don't know, I'm a fan of everything that I make, like every show, every fandom, every like nerdy fleshy, like I like those things and I think it shows. So, so it feels a little disingenuous to be like, oh, Peter Capaldi is going to be here. Thing. Let me yeah. do more Doctor Who stuff. But if that works for you, like, go for it. I'm not, you know, I don't want to yuck anybody's yum, but that's not how I do things. Okay. And would you have any advice to uh, an artist who's considering working in tech for the first time? 
Um, this is uh, Sunday, so you've had a couple days, and you came here last year, so yeah, some yeah. experience with Intech. My advice, um, this is a great audience. Be very comfortable talking to people, because um, people want to talk to you about your you know, fandom and stuff. Um, my other advice would be to bring a table partner. Uh, this is the, the first MTAC that I've worked by myself, and if not for Becca and Joseph, I probably would have died. Uh, <laughs> So, so yeah, bring somebody who can bring you food or watch your table or, yeah. or let you talk escape. with the staff and make sure that they can at least support you if no exactly. one else can. Exactly. So, so yeah, yeah, okay. that would be my advice. Well, that's excellent advice. Yeah, um, and I'd where can we find your work online? Uh, you can find it at www.theevergreenborough.com or on Etsy or just Google the Evergreen Burrow and. Uh, it'll show up because I'm the only result. So yeah, and if anyone has any questions, please feel free to email me. I am more than happy to answer anything specific or general or anything. Okay, so, and do you take yeah. like custom sort of plushie commissions or I metal do. stamping or anything like that? I take like custom metal work commissions. I take custom plushies. I, if you want something, I will find a way to make it work. Fantastic. So, yeah. All right. Well, it's been great talking to you, Becca. I hope you have a fantastic impact. Thank you.